Why would you need 10KA AFDDs when everyone else is using 6KA? It's a common mistake and one that can lead to serious consequences and we'll explain why in just a moment. Installing AFDD sounds simple enough, but in the real world, contractors face a few key challenges. Many three-phase board manufacturers don't offer AFDDs, so electricians are forced to improvise with workarounds. It's not uncommon to see 6KA AFDDs fitted where a 10KA device is actually required. When 10KA rated AFDDs are available, they're often two or even three modules wide. That means larger boards, more wall space, and sometimes even upsized plant rooms. So today we're at this laboratory in Cambridge where we're going to be looking at some rather sensitive electrical equipment and the electrical protection needed to make sure it stays safe. It's a large-scale project with multiple distribution boards being installed across the site. AFDDs are being fitted on all socket outlet circuits, but why? Is it a regulatory requirement to install AFDDs in this commercial installation? Well, no. AFDDs aren't a regulatory requirement for this type of commercial install, but they are recommended under regulation 421.1.7 of BS 7671. This regulation advises the use of AFDDs to reduce the risk caused by arc faults in final circuits with a current not exceeding 32 amps, particularly in installations such as higher risk residential buildings, houses in multiple occupation, purpose-built student accommodation, and care homes. The designers on this commercial install have chosen to fit them on all socket outlets due to the sensitive nature of the equipment and also the superior protection offered by AFDDs. So why the need for 10KA AFDDs? Well, it all comes down to prospective fault current. The fault current that would occur if there was a short circuit. The fault current depends on how close you are to the supply transformer. The closer you are with the building behind us, the higher that prospective short circuit fault current will be, and that can cause you an issue. Because if the prospective fault current is higher than what the device is rated for, it might not trip safely. In fact, it could overheat, get damaged, or even catch fire. So it's crucial that the braking capacity of the protective device exceed the prospective fault current. And in a place like this, where the substation is close by, the prospective fault current could be much higher than the 6KA, which is rated on a lot of protective devices. And this is where Siemens have really stepped up. Their AFDD is rated to 10KA. It's the same size as a standard RCBO or MCB, just a single module wide. And this AFDD is also fully suited for integration with Siemens Alpha and Civicon distribution systems. These systems are engineered for modern infrastructure projects offering modular designs with full design verification in accordance with IEC 61439. The Alpha system delivers high functional density via flexible assembly kits ideal for plant rooms and riser cupboards, while the Civicon range features a centralised buzz bar system that can reduce copper usage by up to 30%. As well as this, both the Alpha and Civicon systems offer a high degree of modularity and customization, making them adaptable to virtually any product specification. Whether you're configuring for critical power infrastructure, multi-tenant commercial buildings, or high-spec laboratories, the modular design allows for tailored layouts that maximize space and performance. Siemens also offer fully integrated MID certified metering, ideal for sub-billing and energy monitoring where regulatory compliance is required. Surge protection is available within the same framework, supporting coordinated protection schemes across distribution boards. Coming back to the AFDDs, installation has been carefully considered. Each unit features Siemens no miss term design, ensuring reliable terminations without needing a mirror or awkward inspection angles. The AFDD also includes a secure DIN rail clip that locks into place with a satisfying click, reducing installation time and ensuring stability in a high vibration environment. Crucially, they're also bi-directional, future-proof to handle reverse energy flow in systems with local generation, such as solar or battery storage. That means one less worry for designers when specifying boards for flexible energy use. So let's find out a little bit more about about this job from the electrical contractors Munro Building Services. We've got Ricky and Carl showing us around today and they're going to talk us through what's going in and why. Was it you guys that decided to go down the AFDD route? Uh, so that was the designer. The reason being there's a lot of power outlets, a lot of sensitive equipment being installed. So specification is AFDDs shall be installed yeah. in most projects now. How much easier does it make it with this AFDD being single module? So much easier for space. Obviously, you're not going to lose two modules. Again, the disc board isn't going to be three, four metres high. No different to connecting up an RCBO. If we had six KAs here, as we're 
traditionally used to with an AFDD, would that have presented a problem? At design stage, it was calculated that the fault current would be close or in excess of 6KA. So rather than taking the minimum approach, we opted to take advantage of the Siemens 10KA range to build in some comfort. So there you have it, a proper 10KA rated AFDD that fits like an RCBO, installs easily and protects the circuit that need it most. Manufactured in the UK, these customizable bits of kit really impressed me and Gaz. Big thanks to Carl, Ricky and the team at Munro Building Services for letting us have a look around this top tier install. And if you want to find out more about the Siemens range or other protective devices available from Electrium, then check out the link in the description. And if you'd like to see some of the secrets that Siemens have used to make this device so compact, check out the video on screen.